We are a podcast. Thank you. Uh, movies, TV show, wrestling, anything that you want to uh, nerd out on, we want to nerd with you. So uh, we are This Is Nerding, and uh, I hope you uh, can follow us. Uh, our uh, channel's over there. So for Tom Sides work, when you think of military movies, what comes to mind? Saving Private Ryan, Black Hawk Down, Pearl Harbor. Well, our next guest has been in all of them. Please welcome Tom Sizemore. Yeah. So you uh, did a, a you, you tend to like uh, military movies and and, and uh, roles. Is that a uh, sort of a, a uh, role that you'd like to uh, pick frequently, or uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, it, it, it was uh, one movie. Uh, when those movies were made, they were done by a you know, really great director, um, a lot of really great directors, you know, Steven Spielberg and Ridley Scott. Michael Bay has been a great director also. It was good director. So it was more of the fact that the script was really strong and the movies and the director was really strong. That's the main reason I did them. I wasn't excited because they were military movies, although I, 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 I like the fact that they, <clears throat> I thought, were depicted the war warfare, honestly. But you've also uh, done uh, period films. Is, uh, do you like history? Yeah, I like history too, but I think once again, most of my choices of before my career kind of took, took a turn for a minute. It was because um, I try to stick with the great directors, the good directors, because they are, you know, they make the better movies. So whether it's do a supporting part with a great director than a leading part with a half assed director. I don't know what I can do about that. This is what it is. <laughs> Who can't hear me? You might want to go see an ear doctor. <laughs> I'm talking really normal. <laughs> Maybe I thought. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So what was I? Well, oh, ask another question. Uh, okay, so let's uh, uh, talk about some of your rules. Um, what was it like, uh, uh, you know, saving Private Ryan, Black Hawk Down? Uh, let's talk about. Saving Private Ryan. So, um, what was it like on set? Um, Steven uh, Spielberg, as you know, of course, um, been magnificently successful from a very young age. <clears throat> so his set was, um, you know, um, real disciplined. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he wanted to do. He didn't, uh, there was no fucking around. You know, we shot the whole movie in 58 days. We shot D-Day in 18 days. It was kind of incredibly fast-paced for that complicated of a sequence. Um, it was a fun atmosphere, but it was, um, like I said, it was a real, Steven doesn't waste any time. Um, you know, he's been doing it for a long time since Jaws, so he, he knows how quickly you can waste money on a movie set. It's real easy to waste money. You're spending such a, a, a large amount of money to begin with, and so he doesn't like to waste money, so there's, there's not, not a lot of grabbing ass or anything you're working. So, um, it was a real serious, it was a serious movie, but we had, you know, it was a lot of fun. That a lot of the actors in the first movie, um, Jeremy Davies, in the second movie, Ed Burns, um, Barry Pepper, all, you know, all the guys besides Tom and I, myself. It was Vin's second movie, so you know they were they were really excited. You know, these younger guys, and it was a lot of fun to be with them. Uh, you've also uh, uh, played a, a military veteran. Uh, what was that like? Uh, Talk about a little bit about um, those roles. Um, a lot of these choices you make are actors make are that's what that's, what, that's what's out there. You know, they make, they make a movie about mobsters. Hollywood likes mobsters. They always have, and um, there's always been movies made about them. Um, I personally don't don't I don't have a feeling of you know I like them or I don't like them. You know, they're interesting. You know, John Gotti's interesting. Um, I played him. He's interesting. Um, I talked to him on the phone. He was in a um, Statesville prison and, uh, where he, di he eventually died. <clears throat> um, De Niro sent the phone call up. And it was kind of fascinating talking to, talking to Gotti. 
Although, the, the mobsters all, you gotta remember, that they're, they're stone killers and they're, they're, they're cocksuckers. I mean, they really are. They'll, they'll, they'll fuck you over and steal your money and kill your wife. And um, you can't forget that when you when you deal with them or fuck with them. They're not cool and um, it's good to be stamped out. Uh, you also did a, a movie uh, with uh, Will Smith. What was that? What was that like? I forgot about that one. Um, it's called um, it was Gene Hackman. Enemy of the State. Enemy of the State. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did that movie. Um, I didn't want to do it actually. When uh, Tony offered it to me, God rest his soul. But I gained uh, 48 pounds to play John Gotti, and I, he, Tony offered that movie to me when I was finishing up. Went into the mob, and I said, I can't be in a movie. Big fat ass, and he said, "Oh no, mate, that's what I want. I want you big fat. I want you big and fat. I want you big and fat." <laughs> and I said, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. I mean, it's one thing to be John Gotti at this weight, but I, I can't be Tom Sizemore at this weight." So he, he convinced me to come see him, and um, and then he made me, uh, he offered me so much money I had to do it. So you know, I like, I like money like everybody else. So um, Pintero, but I'm not, I'm not even in the, I'm not even in the, I'm not even in the uh, credits. You, know, you can't see my name. Um, cause I, I know, my agent said, you know, whatever, cause I was heavy, I don't know. So it was a lot of fun, Will's, Will's a cool cat, um, he just met his wife, Jada, she was there. They were, they were tr they're tremendously nice people, yeah. Are there any, uh, roles that particularly stand out to you that you, uh, enjoyed being on, or, or doing? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a poor kid from Detroit. Uh, I had a dream, you know, to be an actor is uh, really stupid in a way. If I had known when I was 15 how long the odds were, I don't know that I would have done it. But um, I was, um, was, you know, uh, my mom was on welfare, you know, we didn't have any money. Uh, we didn't have a car. And I, thought, well, mom, I bought the Sizemore's her first car when I was 23. We were, we were the uh, bus people, that's what we were called. So um, when you're the bus people, um, and I told my mom I wanted to be an actor. She said, oh, God, in heaven, have mercy on my soul. Another bum. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, you know, I've released, a, I've released a family for the pangs of poverty, which is kind of a trip. You know, I put eight siblings in college. And I bought mother a house, all kinds of shit. So it worked out for me. <clears throat> but I wouldn't advise anyone else to do it. Um, I was real determined. I was talented. I knew I was talented. I could sing, I could dance, I could imitate people. I just knew I was talented. I just knew I was. And um, I had a lot, of, a lot of teachers tell me I was and all that. But that even that, all things being equal, it doesn't happen for people. I know a lot of actors in New York when I was starting out in 1982. They were better than me. Thank you. They were better than me. And they, 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 they never worked. You know? they're, they're attorneys. They're accountants. Some of them are dead. Um, it's a really rough, rough business. But if you're fortunate enough like myself, it can be, you know, for me, for my family, it's, it's, it's been, it's been um, the most important thing that's happened in their lives because um, we were in some horrible chain of poverty, you know, and no one could break the chain of poverty. And uh, all these NBA players, you know, these guys, you know, they're, they're stuck in this chain of poverty. That's why it's so important for them to, to do well um, if they get an opportunity because if, it, if you don't, you know, you're still going to be not having anything in it. This is not a country to have nothing in. So, uh, what did you want to be as a kid? Is this is an actor what you really wanted, or did you have a dream? I wanted my mom to stop worrying. Um, that was my dream. I was, I'm the first of nine. I was born when my mom was 15. Um, my father was um, not around very much, but um, so I wanted money. Um, I, I grew up in a, the 60s and the riots in Detroit in 67, 68, I mean, it was just brutal. It was just fucking brutal. And there were two blocks with the riots where they took off. And uh, the only way out was money. And um, it was education, or, you know, there's a lot of guys in my neighborhood who went into crime. They're all dead or in prison. My kindergarten class, I'm the only guy still alive except for two girls. Um, I grew up in the right, right in the, in the, in the, in the ghetto of Detroit. So acting has been a, a godsend for me, you know. That's why I was so fucked up, I got in trouble and all that shit, but, you know, I, I survived it, but, um, it wasn't going to happen to anybody, it could happen to me, because I've got two brothers been to prison and all that kind of shit, you know, but, um, I, my dream was to, to release my mother from the, 
from the um, her just hand ringing worry about what's going to happen to us. <laughs> that was that was it. I wanted to see her happy. Is there a, a, a moment in your career that sticks out to you that was like just wow, um, and it, or any crazy story uh, that was sticks out? Jack Nicholson took my mom to her birthday when she turned 40, and uh, I start crying, but I'm like, oh. so you know, and that was the most, you know, this was a surprise party for her. De Niro did, and, uh, and Jack squared her to the party, so that was really a special night, a special day. Uh, what's your, um, on, the, on the podcast, we talk a lot about nerding. Um, what's your nerding? Uh, nerding is basically you know, you're really enthusiastic about something. Like uh, some people like superheroes, some people like movies, some people like TV shows, uh, wrestling. Um, is there anything that you nerded out on as a kid? Yeah, I, I, I really, I really like movies. Um, my mother was a real bright lady, and she uh, she turned me on to movies first. She had me watch Beckett with Richard Burton and Peter O'Toole. Um, she took me to see the, the Deer Hunter when I was 13. And she said, Tommy, I don't know what's good about this movie, but <laughs> my brother told me it's important. <laughs> she took me to see Network, uh, the City Limits movie about the um, same thing. She said, I don't, know what's, I don't know what's so great about this movie, but my brother said it's really important. So um, my mom was a real conscientious uh, parent. She tried her best under fire circumstances. Is there any uh, crazy fan moments that you've had? I've had a lot of crazy fan moments here. <laughs> Any in particular? They're not saying. They're not dead. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Uh, what is what's uh, next? Because I know I, I went on your IMDb and I know there was you've got a ton of projects. So, uh, what do you what do you have working on right now? Um, I'm, I'm doing a movie with Virginia Virginia Madsen. Virginia Matson, Michael's sister, who was in um, the movie about the astronauts, Billy Bob Thornton and Bruce Willis. Uh, she had other movies too. Virginia and I do a movie called Twisted in November. And I'm doing a movie called Im Imperatus. Uh, that's how you pronounce it. It's a really great movie. It's a great script with um, Bill Pullman in the spring. That's it. That's it. There's not another variant that pushes everything back again. It's been tough because of the variant, the, the coronavirus. And I, I, I just finished a pilot called, um, um, fuck. What's the woman's name from, um, what's the, the lead character's name in Gone with the Wind? Mark Gable. No, um, the woman, uh, no, Vivian Lee plays her. Vivian. Oh. Scarlett O'Hara? Scarlett Yeah, Scarlett. Okay. The show's called Scarlett, that's right. <laughs> the show's called Scarlett, but it's about a reconfiguration of the mob in 20... 22 America, and how, how they might, um, because of Rico, they can't be in the same, they can't be within like 20 yards or 150 yards of each other. So it's really hard to, for mobsters to do business. And this is, um, I just finished, it's called Scarlet. Yeah, Scarlet, it's called Scarlet. S-C-A-R-L-E-T-T. -E -T. And we just finished it, it's a pilot for Hulu, and um, let's hope it goes. It was really, I thought it was really good when I did it. I just finished it like a couple weeks ago. For anyone that has any particular questions, uh, please reach out. Yeah. Uh, just curious, what was it like voicing uh, Sonic Corelli in Grand Theft Auto Vice City? Huh? He wants to know about what was it like uh, voicing uh, for uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City in Sonic Grand Theft Auto. It was a hundred thousand dollars nice. <laughs> how that? How long did that take you? One day. Seriously, it was fun. You know, Lawrence Taylor was in it, Debbie Harry was in it, a lot of cool people were in it. Um, they paid everybody a lot of money, so, you know, it was cool. Were you a, a fan of Grand Theft Auto? No. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Well, they're dead, so you can't do a lot of research on them, because they're angels. <laughs> I play one of the angels, so I have to do a lot of research on that. So, 
I just hung out with Charles Grodin and um, Kira Sedgwick and uh, Alpha. Um, I became really great friends with Robert Downey Jr. I'm still one of his better friends, one of my best friends. Um, we tried to ruin each other's lives, kind of, with drugs, but we didn't, thankfully. And um, we met on that movie, and it was a lot of fun. But we didn't do a lot of research, like I said, for the Plan Angels. Uh, what is Robert Downey Jr. like? Uh, about, he's like about 5'10". Have you ever had to, uh, did you ever do any prep for any of your other films? Uh, I know you said you've done a lot of the military stuff. Did you ever like go and follow anyone in the military or, or do any prep for that? Black Hawk Down, I lived with Danny McKnight, who was uh, head of the ground forces who I played in the movie. I lived with him for three months in, um, in Georgia. Um, it was my idea, and I contacted um, Jerry Bruckheimer and contacted him, and he thought it would be a good idea too, so I went and I lived with him for three months. Um, I really love acting. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm one of these actors, and as I've gotten older, I haven't. It doesn't. It hasn't. It hasn't diminished its its its, its hold on me. It, it's still as much fun today as it was. Maybe not as much fun as the very beginning, but it, it's still. A, I get a gigantic kick out. Gigantic kick out of it. I love doing it. I'm very fortunate to be able to do it. Um, it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. Um, so I've had a numerous great moments on, on movie sets. Um, a movie set's a really unique, unique place to be because the people that are working there, almost all of them are choosing to be there. I've worked other places in my life and, and most people don't want to be there. And that's what makes a movie set kind of a charm, magical place because you can have 100 to 600 people and all of them want to be there no place else. So it makes the potential for special moments really high. Is there uh, any particular role or, or movie or, or series that you uh, that is like a dream role for you? Um, if you feel like, uh, no, 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 not really. Just um, I like playing interesting people. Um, I like to be in the movie a lot. I like playing leading parts. <laughs> I like to get paid and. Uh, no, if I had a, if a historical figure, it might be interesting. I'd like to play, I'd like to play Ted Kennedy because um, of his monumental losses. Um, played Ted Kennedy from age 28 to the end. At 28, he lost both his brothers and his sister, all three of his brothers and his one, two of his sisters. And one was dead, and one was in a mental institution. So that's five siblings, and he was only 28 years old the night his brother Bobby died. And I just find um, his life fascinating that he didn't blow his brains out or just like quit life because. I have a bunch of siblings, and I can't imagine losing one of them. And I did lose one of them, and it was unimaginably painful. And uh, he lost five of them. So he, he, uh, a lot of people like to kick that guy in the ass, you know, say he's an asshole, he wasn't an asshole at all. I got to know the Kennedy somewhat, and um, yeah, Ted Kennedy. Uh, we asked for uh, fan questions um, before I came here. Uh, we're curious if you, uh, if you did heavy research on uh, playing White Earp. White Earp. No. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of questions. Uh, we're curious about uh, uh, playing opposite uh, Kevin Costner and Bill Pullman. It's wider. Um, actually, you know, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Costner is one of the nicer guys I know, and nicer actors I know, and so is Bill. Um, Bill and I remain friends. You know, Kevin's a superstar. We're, we're friendly, but um, you know, he's a, it's a different, it's a different world, it's a different life for Kevin. Um, got a jet. You know, once you have a jet, you know, it, it, things are different for you. Um, so, um, what was good, this is something that, like, when you, when you got a big budget, a big star, we shot a big sequence where we were shooting Buffalo, Bill Pullman and I, and then Kevin and Larry, Larry Kasdan directed it. They wanted, they didn't like it. So, we stopped the movie, and we flew to South Dakota, and we were there for three weeks, and that's where Kevin had a house and a bunch of casinos he had bought, and we just fucked around over there, and we shot one day, and that's what's in the movie. And it, it probably cost like 12 million bucks. And it was because he's Kevin Costner. He just won seven Oscars for uh, Angela Wolf. So, you know, you can write your ticket. Uh, someone asked, uh, you were stuck on a 10-hour flight. Who would you most want? 
Uh, and for those of you that don't know, we got a little delayed this morning. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, how was that? stuck on a 10-hour flight, had to be, uh, who would you mostly want to be stuck next to? Tom Hanks or Reese Witherspoon? Tom Hanks or who? Why? And Reese Witherspoon. They're both really funny and uh, they uh, are gregarious and if you ask them to be quiet, they don't know how to be quiet. And, uh, <laughs> Tom Hanks is Sandra Bullock. Oh, and Reese Witherspoon is Tom Hanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I work with Tom, I'm just, I'm just friends with the other two gals. Um, they're both great actors, but they're, they're irrepressible personalities. Oh. Uh, what's uh, something that other people, uh, just going back to being nerdy, uh, what's something other people nerd out on that you just don't understand at all, like it's just annoying to you? Social media. What do you hate about social media? <laughs> There's a reason that you know, only certain people have the, 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 have the floor because the others are, are assholes and stupid or uneducated. They shouldn't be talking about a fucking thing. They should be working nine to five or, you know, in a welfare line. So I'm guessing you have, I'm guessing you have uh, no social media accounts whatsoever? You gotta have them. You know, I have them. But I don't, I don't weigh in on the fucking dude. I did my own research on the virus and uh, the vaccine's bad. The motherfuckers have done shit. Who really did the research on the virus are the fucking scientists. Chris Nolan's latest movie. It's terrific. It's kind of confusing, but it's worth it's worth it. He directed it. I know. Yeah. yeah you uh, David Washington. You said you liked that uh, Black Panther. Are you uh, big on Marvel or DC? No, not necessarily. I, I like Black Panther. I really like uh, Mike Jordan, and I like um, God Rest His Soul, the young man that passed away. Um, will you ever consider being Marvel or DC? Absolutely. They got really great actors. I mean, uh, I'm not really a big Marvel fan, but I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a good actor fan, great actor fan. So there's a lot of great actors in those movies. Does anyone uh, else have any questions? Uh, yeah, go ahead, you first. Um, you were great in True Romance. What's your best recollection in True Romance and working with Quentin Tarantino? Um, my recollection of Quentin is he wasn't there. Really? Um, he wasn't there. No, he wrote it. Yeah. But uh, Tony, Tony Scott had was the director. Quentin was um, actually Quentin was um, directing Pulp Fiction at that time. Um, I've done two of Quentin's movies that he wasn't present either. Natural Born Killers and um, True Romance. Um, I realized in that movie was how, how 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 great an actor Chris Penn is, and how uh, what, what, a, what a bummer it is that he's gone. I became really good friends with him, and um, he had a lot of problems. You know, he was depressed a lot. He was great to me, you know, he brought his brother Sean and owned my house and shit, and then um, I just moved to Hollywood kind of in 1990, 1991, and Chris really helped me out those uh, first few years in LA. Yeah. Uh, 
You had a question. It, it's a horror movie. You know, horror movies aren't going to get a lot of traction unless it's The Shining, which isn't really a horror movie. It's a psychological thriller. Um, when your highest paid actor is the Cthulhu, you're just not going to get a lot of traction. You know? <laughs> the Cthulhu costs six million bucks to make them. So. <laughs> it's a good movie, though. Penelope Ann Miller and me. It, it, it's, it's, it's a good entertainment. Yeah. It's just amazing. Again, Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're, you're too kind. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Killers, Heat, Saving Private Ryan, and um, Black Hawk Down. Those are my four favorite movies I've been in, and it's because of um, Oliver Stone, Steven Spielberg, Michael Mann, and Ridley Scott. We have a question over here. Sergeant Michael Horvath and Private Ryan had a lot of great qualities, you know. Too bad he got killed, you know. That's a true story, you know, he was, he was in fact, killed. Um, if, if he had lived, it would be nice to see him. I like, to, I like doing um, Skagnetti, but I don't think Skagnetti should be on his own anywhere. You know, he's not a British guy. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you, uh, you played uh, mob chasers. Is that just something that's been always been an interest in? Uh, I like the, the mob. Is that something that you really, really enjoy doing? Like, kind of the bad guy? You know, Hollywood makes a lot of movies about mobsters, and it's just, it's just the way it is. And, um, they used to make a lot of westerns, and they, they, they've been in love with mobsters, and they never stop. So it's, it's just that they make them, and um, I don't necessarily have a great fondness for mobsters, although they can be interesting, but you, you should remember that mobsters are, are assholes and kill people and steal money and extort people. From, Legitimately hardworking people and fuck people over every day, and uh, they need to get fucked over. So uh, we talked about what's next for you, but uh, where can everybody uh, find you? With like you know no social, you don't care for social media, but where can? I don't care for social media, but you know, I have my pages and shit. Um, some of my pages, and then they ask me questions and shit. It's, it's important. But it's Tom Pierce Sizemore on Instagram and uh, Tom Sizemore on Facebook. Tom dot Sizemore, Instagram, and Tom Sizemore, Facebook. One more, a few more questions? Yeah, um, so were, did, you, did you start acting early, did you say, and did you train? And are you a character or a method actor? Or what, what? Um, I trained, I started acting when I was 15, um, and I, 
I studied the, um, I trained, I, I did the miser technique for three years, and um, I did the method for two years. Um, I don't necessarily practice those things when I do a, a role. I mean, I, I'm kind of a hodgepodge of those things. But I think any actor, that, if you're gonna, you, you should train, you know. It, it, it gives you a language, a, a way to communicate with other actors and directors if, if you have some education. You know. Have and, you made a record, have you sang, or did you record anything? Oh, I did 29 musicals, but I've, I've never, made, never made an album. <laughs> I, was a, I, was a, I was a Broadway uh, chorus boy in the beginning of my life, my professional life, yeah. Would you ever do a musical? Yep. Yeah? yeah. Anyone else have any questions? I was leading the Sopranos, I turned it down. I'm an idiot. Oh. Uh, would you ever do any of their, uh, any series or, or movies again? I do the Sopranos. David Chase's choice, and I actually said to him, "You're out of your fucking mind. This isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna work." <laughs> Anyone else have any other questions? Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Can you repeat that? Hot. We're in Morocco for six months. to be in a movie, I mean, it's hard to be in a movie, bro, you know, I'm in, I'm in those movies, I'm a co-star to major stars, so I was, I was, I was real cool, and I was real hip, I was only 23, 24, 25 years old, so um, I wasn't going to say, fuck these guys, I want to be the lead, I was right, I mean, I, I was building towards that, you know, I, I was always, um, I was really grateful to be in movies, you know, because um, like I said, when I was in New York, I studied with a couple of really, really, really talented actors that were my age that never got a chance, so um, I've always been really grateful for, for, for the opportunity. It's way more. It's way more rewarding to be the lead in the movie. Yeah, the more responsibilities. It's like anything in life. If you're the reason something works, you're the reason it goes. I mean, it's more rewarding to be LeBron James than it is to be um, you know, Kyle Kuzma. I mean, LeBron James is why you're gonna win or lose. Kyle Kuzma is just a guy on the team. You know, it's more rewarding to be the guy. You want to be the guy. I always want to be the guy. I want the ball at the end of the game. Go ahead. You you had a question? I'm not going to share them. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Next one is Bai Ling. Uh, I hope you guys stick around. That is uh, at 2 o'clock. So please join us for Bai Ling at 2 o'clock. 